You're the greatest actor in the world. Everybody knows that, including you. Don't be a prima donna. Whenever there's a chance to take the spotlight away from me, it's becoming ridiculous the way you grab attention. Whenever I start to tell a story, you finish it. If I go on a diet, you lose the weight. If I have a cold, you cough. And if we should ever have a baby, I'm not so sure I'd be the mother. I'm satisfied to be the father. This was Carol Lombard's last picture, To Be or Not to Be, with Jack Benny and Robert Stack, directed and produced by the master of comedy, Ernst Lubitsch, and released shortly after her tragic death in a plane crash, only three months after her 33rd birthday. She had, for the previous seven years, become known as the queen of screwball comedy, though she'd made over 20 silent pictures and over 20 talkies before Howard Hawks cast her opposite John Barrymore in 20th Century. She'd been known before that as a good but fairly straight dramatic actress, Hawks told me once he'd seen her a little drunk at a party and figured if he could get her to let her hair down like that on the screen, she'd be a sensation. He was right. Two years later, the Academy nominated her for Gregory LeCava's My Man Godfrey, among the dizziest of all romantic comedies. With William Powell, whom Lombard had divorced only three years earlier. No, I know you love me. I do not love you, and you're getting me all wet. You do, or you wouldn't have lost your temper. What is the meaning of this, may I ask? Oh, Mother, Godfrey loves me. Put me in the shower. What are you talking about? Godfrey, I demand an explanation. I think perhaps, madam, that I had better resign. Yes, I think you'd better listen. Very good idea. What do you think your father would say to all of you? I can't believe anybody says Godfrey loves me. Hey, hey, young She'd been born Jane Alice Peters in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But when Jane Alice was six, her parents separated, and her mother and two older brothers moved to Los Angeles. And in 1920, when Jane was 12, pioneer director Alan Dwan saw her, as he told me once, playing baseball on the street with some kids. She was a cute-looking little tomboy, he said, out there knocking hell out of the other kids, playing better baseball than they were. Needed a kid like that for a picture, so he cast Jane in A Perfect Crime with Monty Blue. Four years later, she went into it professionally, changed her name to Carol Lombard, first for some small parts, then for a series of two real comedies for Max Sennett. When the talkies arrived, she became a dependable leading lady and, while married to he William did. Powell, did one film with the man mm -hmm. she would marry six years later, the king of Hollywood, mm -hmm. Clark Gable. They'd met at a costume party Jock Whitney threw. The guests were asked to appear in something white, so Lombard, who was noted in Hollywood as a jokester, arrived at the party in a white ambulance and was carried in on a stretcher. She did a picture with Hitchcock and heard that Hitch had said actors are like cattle, so on the first day of shooting, the director arrived to find a corral and three young cows in it, courtesy Carol Lombard. Not wanting to be typed as a comedy actress, Lombard made numerous dramatic pictures, among them in Name Only with Cary Grant. But the kind of films the public loved her in were comedies, like the classic Ben Heck, William Wellman screwball, Nothing Sacred with Frederick March. Mm -hmm. and that's for your Aunt Mary. Come on, keep moving, my little frog. I'll never forgive you. I won't. I just hate you. I just hate you. Let go of me. Let go of me. Oh, I hate you. At the peak of her career and her happiness with Gable, she called him Pa and he called her Ma. Lombard went on a defense bond tour for the government. It was January 1942, and the U.S. had just entered the war. Flying back to L.A., her plane crashed into a mountain near Las Vegas. All 22 aboard were killed, 15 of them Army officers, and Carol Lombard and her mother. In this tragic atmosphere, the last comedy she'd made didn't seem appropriate, especially since it was perhaps Lubitsch's most outrageous black comedy, about a troop of Polish actors trying to outwit the Nazis. The picture has only recently come into its own and is now ranked among the best of Lubitsch and Lombard and Jack Benny. It happened. What every actor dreads. What, darling? What? Someone walked out on me. Oh. Tell me, Maria, am I losing my grip? Oh, of course not, darling. I'm so sorry. But he walked out on me. Oh, maybe he didn't feel well. Maybe he had to leave. Maybe he had a sudden heart attack. I hope so. If he stayed, he might have died. Maybe he's dead already. Oh, darling, you're so comforting. Nowhere else did Lombard's unique quality shine through more clearly. Her toughness, her allure, her wit and charm. You might not believe it, but I can drop three tons of dynamite in two minutes. Really? But does that interest you? It certainly does. More fresh, irreverent, and alive than ever. I hope you forgive me if I acted a little clumsy, but this is the first time I ever met an actress. Lieutenant, this is the first time I've ever met a man who could drop three tons of dynamite in two minutes. Bye.